Next up on WTV, Chromebooks, college visits, and this week's edition of My Life Ask. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Red Hog Nation. Today is Wednesday, August 30th, and I'm Christine Hahn with today's daily update, brought to you by Wingspan TV. A Frisco ISD Chromebook that's not working can be a stressful thing, but there's a certain procedure to get it fixed. The first step in getting a FISD One for All device fixed is to scan the QR code on the screen or go to the address of the screen. Once that is done, students need to follow the directions and complete the form. From there, students will take their Chromebook to C131. Some things to keep in mind before submitting a repair request or going to the repair room. The school does not provide extra chargers to borrow. If a student has lost their charger, they can scan the QR code to order an approved replacement. Or they can stop by C131 and ask to have the replacement fee added to their account, and once the fee is paid, a replacement charger will be provided. In addition, students are asked to shut down their device at least once a week in order to ensure updates are installed and the device continues to work properly. The Chromebook room is open before school from 8.30 to 9 or during advisory. Reporting for WTV, this is Christine Hahn. For juniors and seniors, deciding which college to go to is a big decision. College visits can make that easier. WTV's Aditi Shah has the... Throughout the school year, college, university, and military representatives stop by campus and make themselves available in the cafeteria. This allows students the opportunity to find out more about certain schools without leaving campus. Being able to get insight is helpful for students such as Junior Joseph Skinnell. Um, I learned a lot of different options for college. It also gave me a lot of ideas of where I want to go, what I want to do, and like the best financial options too. Students may speak to college representatives during lunch in the cafeteria. To find out more about upcoming college visits, check out the bulletin board by the front of the school. Reporting for WTV, I am Aditi Shah. On this week's edition of STEM Spotlight, WTV's Harris Rahman discusses biomes. Three, two, one. Ecosystems such as deserts, tundras, rainforests, and savannas are all examples of biomes. Biomes are determined by abiotic factors such as wind patterns, temperature, soil conditions, and precipitation. The biomes are the different type of ecosystems we have on our planet, and they're based off of the main factors of temperature and precipitation. Based off of those things, you get varying amounts of vegetation, and then therefore that gives you different types of wildlife. So those adaptations in the plants and the animals, um, due to the differences in heat, uh, solar radiation, as well as rainfall, um, is what in particular makes those biomes. Biomes should not necessarily change. However, there are changing factors with human impact. Uh, human impacts such as global climate change and things like that are shifting biomes. So because of like a slew of reasons that you know humans impact our ecosystems, it's changing the way that um, they're receiving the amount of precipitation um, in these areas. And so that's also affecting particularly how these biomes are then reacting and changing and shifting. Reporting for WTV, this is Haris Rahman. On this week's edition of My Life Ask, WTV takes a look into the life of volleyball player MJ McCurdy. Okay, so first we got in the locker room and put all of our stuff on, our knee pads and stuff for volleyball. And then we go set up the nets so that they're ready after we watch film. And then we head to film. We have a scouting report we go over. And then we just watch what Reedy is good at. That's who we're playing tonight. And their strengths and their weaknesses. And then we go to practice. We do dynamic warm-up. And then we warm up with a partner and do, like, we pepper and stuff. And then we play fours for a little bit on game day just to have good vibes that day. And then we do serve receive drill so that we can feel good about that and who we're around. And then we'll just practice the rotations for who we're playing that night. So we just run through all the rotations and see what works and what doesn't and practice how Reedy will act tonight. If 
you are looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, or visit our award-winning website at libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. Are you interested in trading stocks? Do you have a competitive spirit? Applications are open for the Wharton Global Investing Challenge team at LHS. Scan this QR code or stop by Dr. Ham's room at C206 to apply. Love sports? Want to possibly get paid to work games? Join the Frisco IC Sports Broadcasting Production crew by scanning the QR code below. The first Liberty HOSA meeting day is September 8th. There are two meeting times, 815 or advisory, and both will be held in the lecture hall. Attendance is required for all prospective HOSA members and make sure to join Liberty Hostess Remind at libhosa23 and Instagram at libertyhosa to stay updated with important dates, events, and more. FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes, we will be having our first meeting Wednesday, September 6th in the gym. The official start time is 6.30, but join us at 6.15 for food and games before the message. This club is not just for athletes, all are welcome. Black Student Union will be holding their first meeting today in room C-154. There will be snacks, fun icebreakers, and more. That's it for today's daily update. This is Christine Hahn for Wingspan TV.